Good morning, and welcome to the special session of the Asian Monetary Policy Forum 2020. The outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic and the measures taken to contain its spread have kept us apart this year in a regrettable but necessary cyclical deviation from the trend of the previous six forums. But technological advances of the last decade as a continuing secular force have brought us together virtually for the seventh edition of the EMPF. The discourse and discussions of past EMPFs have been a useful reminder of the vulnerabilities and monetary policy challenges posed by excessive capital flow volatility, the international and monetary and financial non system, and more recently, protectionism concerns. But none of us could have imagined that a virus outbreak would force a virtual standstill to economic activity and closure of the world economy as a recent cover of The Economist so vividly portrayed. Even as we deliberate <clears throat> the issues today, the economic costs continue to mount at this point, and we have little clarity as to the next phase of adjustment and its full implication for the labour market and corporate sector. COVID-19 possesses several atypical features that are of interest to economists. In terms of typology and classification, this is obviously not your usual business cycle recession. First, we are not dealing with the conventional Keynesian deficiencies of aggregate demand. The short fall in global consumption and investment demand, and hence trade, was occasioned by the need for home lockdowns and social distancing measures, which essentially cuts off a large portion of what would constitute normal spending and provision of labor supply. Heightened uncertainty and fear add to the curtailment. It is more apt, as some have done, to characterize COVID-19 as a Keynesian supply shock, since containment measures also disrupt production with a coincident demand-side response. Second, the profile of the decline in economic activity takes the form of a discontinuity and not the usual inverse hum shape trajectory typical of a business cycle downturn. A greater part of the shock would sidestep price adjustments and take place directly to a constriction along the horizontal axis or a quantitative adjustment. Comparing the skin curve with historical data, its shape resembles that of wartime conditions, though even this analogy is imperfect because the production of armaments during wartime prevented the near-sudden stop we are witnessing now. And third, the effects of circuit breaker and such like measures have caused an abrupt cessation of business revenue and cash flow streams in the economy. This is akin to what Walter Backhart had described as wild periods of alarm, where one failure makes many. But this time taking place, within the real sector itself. Given the multifaceted dimensions of the COVID-19 pandemic and its implications for the global and regional economies, we are most honored to have two of the world's eminently qualified economists to provide us with their views and insights. To start off, we have the opening address by Dr. Gita Gopinath, Economic Counselor of the International Monetary Fund and the Director of its Research Department, who will speak about the economic impact of COVID-19 with a focus on the Asian region. Dr. Gopinad, as you all know, is an eminent scholar in international trade and finance. She has been at the forefront in formulating the IMF's economic responses and assistance, particularly to emerging economies. In addition, she and the fund recognized early on the potential severity of economic effects, producing what appeared at that time to be overly dire projections of global growth 
in the April 2020 WEO. Yet the current consensus has converged broadly to the IMF's prognostications. Dr. Gopinath is also highly attuned to the external balance challenges facing emerging market economies. Having spent a large portion of her academic career researching this area. And she has been a thought leader in the IMF efforts for designing integrated policy frameworks in emerging economies. As such, we look to the fund to continue to issue cogent and effective policy direction and advice. Next, we have Dr. Adam Posen, an internationally recognized expert on global economic and financial issues currently president of the Peterson Institute of International Economics. Adam has been at the forefront of international monetary and financial issues for decades and has directly confronted the reality of policy formulation and trade-offs. He's always perceptive, always generous in his views, and we in Singapore, as well as the MES particularly, have benefited from his insights. Dr. Posen, will present on realistic global coordination in the economic policy response to COVID-19. Global governments have jointly come up with an unprecedented fiscal response, amounting to at least 4.5% of GDP. But this has been implemented by national authorities responding to their individual circumstances. Dr. Posen intends to go beyond this perspective to consider what can be done in a coordinated manner. The issue of international policy coordination has been a long-standing one. So we certainly look forward to his ideas on how to collectively tackle a crisis as singular as the present one. While we deal with the present challenges provided posed by COVID-19, the vestiges of the pre-COVID world are still with us. The teams that have underpinned past EMPFs have tried to impress upon us the importance of how we should go about cross-border integration with an adequate toolkit to, tool to maintain price and financial stability. <coughs> Professor Marcus Brunemeyer from Princeton will discourse on a safe asset perspective for an integrated policy framework. The problem of scarcity of safe assets has formally been recognized since at least Robert Triffin. And Marcus and his co-authors used the fundamental properties of safe assets as a core component of the analytical framework that attempts to meld the imperatives of macro as well as financial stability in an integrated world. Professor Bruno Nemeyer will shed new light on this important issue by switching the focus away from nominal price rigidities to save assets as harbors to hedge risks, and in so doing provides for useful insights on optimal policy response. Marcus brings to bear a remarkable clarity to complex issues, often bringing innovative insights and always underpinned by the deep scholarship that he imbues. We have also two well-known academics come policy makers to discuss Professor Bruman Namaya's paper, Professor Frank Smets and Professor Viral Acharya. You'll be familiar with their seminal research in monetary policy analysis and financial markets research, respectively. While holding an academic appointment, Professor Smets is currently Director General Economics at the European Central Bank. Professor Viral is currently at New York University and was formerly, formerly Deputy Governor of the Reserve Bank of India. They are therefore well placed to assign and add insightful perspectives to the commissioned paper. Let me express MES's deep appreciation for the contributions and participation of our distinguished speakers, who despite false adjustments to the modus operandi of the forum, have proceeded with their presentations pertinent to the times. I also like to acknowledge the efforts of our AMPF co-organizers, the Asian Bureau for Financial and Economic Research, EFFA, 
the National University of Singapore Business School and the Chicago Boot School of Business to make AMPF a reality, even if a virtual one. I personally would like to thank my co-organizers, Professor Bernard Young and his team at ABFAR, <clears throat> as well as Professor Stephen Davis of Chicago Boot for their tireless work, strong support and guidance throughout the planning and preparations. Together with my colleagues at the MES, I hope you will benefit from the program that we have put together for this year's EMPF. Thank you.